Hey, what's up? Sergio here with another quick uh, tutorial in Houdini. This time it's procedural cliff. There are several procedural cliff tutorials out there. Mostly they focus on rather complicated setup with 4-H loops. And I might add, as a trade-off, you get more detailed version of those cliffs. But if you're short on time, as I usually am, and you want to populate this thing quickly with some assets, doesn't really matter if they're super detailed, but at least they look somewhat, you know, as you see this particular one, and that's enough for you, that can you stick around and see how I actually created those. So without further ado, let's jump into the clip creation process, which again, usually in my tutorials, it's very simple and quick. Uh, I disregard a lot of uh, stuff in terms of, hey, let's do very particular detail here and there. Yeah, let's just throw everything out and focus on the bulk base, how to create that one. Uh, okay, so mainly this focuses on scattering and copy to points, well, stamp in this particular uh, approach. So I just dropped the shape, which will drive the actual outline of your cliff. Then I remesh it to create more points, and then I scatter points on this remesh surface. That would be one of the options for you to create different uh, versions of the same asset. Then we copy to points uh, the geometry. In this case, it's just a tube. Don't forget to stamp the inputs and, you know, provide random values to the transform later on so that you will get an uh, interesting looking silhouette to begin with. Then we repeat the same approach and scatter another set of points and copy another geo to those points, mainly to end up with something looking like this. And it looks weird. Uh, maybe some of you already tried this approach and for some reason you didn't like it. Fair enough. Uh, for my particular case, it worked okay. Uh, actually, this you can repeat it, well, uh, the many times you want. Depends how detailed you want your geo ended up. Uh, and if you're not really, you know, up to using displacement map and prefer to work with the geometry it itself, at least to begin with, then you could just repeat several times and see what uh, shape you'll end up with. Then the usual trick. We go through VDB, convert and back uh, to merge those uh, shapes nicely and drop an attribute VOP in which I just, uh, well, let's actually jump inside so that I would maybe explain it better for you guys, in which we basically create a whole bunch of different noises. I mean, this one is parse convolution, zero centered parallel, alligator with all different setups and we just feed it all into max and minimum, then average it out and fit it to the x and z position. I mean, I broke down the p vector in those uh, elements. We keep y uh, as is and just fit it back into itself. So, because in my particular case, I didn't need to jump it up and down. So I would pretty happy just take this shape and work with it. Also, don't forget to drop veins now. It's really nice to add any particular... I mean, let me increase the noise up here so you see what kind of details it's adding to the overall shape. So, I would say really nice and really quick. I mean, we've done half of the job already and it took only, well, less than a second to cook compared to most uh, approaches that took... I don't know, several minutes if you have very heavy scene with the 4 h loops. Usually it uh, takes a while. Uh, if you're very proficient with Houdini already, you can just create 4 h loops to iterate between shapes. If not, you can just repeat the steps manually and create a whole bunch of assets like this, just varying the scale, uh, any other noise attributes, overall shape to scatter points on, and so on and so forth. So I just duplicated the setup and just created a bunch of uh, different shapes and put them together. And then we repeat the same step again to smooth things out. We pull it from uh, VDB to polygons and back and then subdivide it a bit. And that way we create a bit more details with the nice outline, basically. And then you can maybe even, since we're, you know, taking it on the next level just a bit, add another layer of detail. This one is a bit extreme, but then in the end, as you can see on render, it looks okay. And if you decide to 
iterate on this parameter as well, create a whole bunch of variations and just stack them all together, you'll get pretty nice uh, cliff uh, wall and use it somewhere in the background. And that will only take like several minutes to set up. And if you want to populate scene as quick as possible to just check it out if the you know scale works, if the composition is okay, something that is done does not require too much time for you to set up but still the result kind of looks okay to me at least um, i usually encourage people to play around with noises play around with the setups that i usually provide you with because sometimes you can come up with something more interesting that you know i usually do in my tutorials because i'm very lazy and not uh, keen on spending too much time on it uh, but yeah i think it looks okay could be worse, I might add, but you know, could be better as well. Usually, I would prefer to add details at this point using uh, displacement map rather than keep editing and creating more polygons needlessly. But it depends on a task, I would say. So here it is, very quick uh, tutorial on how to create procedural rock or well, cliff rather in Houdini. Uh, you can check out more tutorials on my channel and uh, as well uh, as other cinematics that I've been doing. Not that many, but, you know, check that out as well. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And uh, see you around. So it is out. Cheers.